Welcome, and thank you for reviewing the Connections Learning Series. This is Vistalink's Leading Edge two-part learning series for older adults and family caregivers to build their empowerment, well-being, and resilience. The program on the left, Changing Perspectives, presents rich and diverse stories of caregiving and teaches a framework of skills for navigating the caregiving relationship with deep self-care, collaboration, and staying power. The program on the right, Creating What's Next, shares with older adults the secret sauce to aging well with resilience, optimism, self-determination, and purpose. We'll show you the skills, methodology, efficacy, and formats of both programs in this presentation. Older adults and family caregivers share a common desire, camaraderie with others who are walking a similar road. But they also need to develop their resilience, renew optimism, live with purpose, focus on self-care, problem-solve together, and expand their support networks. The Connections Learning Series enables them to do just that. Later, you'll see the program components, but first, we'd like to share the program methodology for context. The program methodology is called docu-training. Docu-training is a blend word for documentary style film with a training function. It's education that changes behavior. Docu-training uses the real life stories and wisdom of older adults and caregivers. These stories have been captured on film and have been used to illustrate the evidence-informed skills of the program. The skills of each program build personal determinants of health in older adults and caregivers. Both programs have focused interactivity that enable people to apply the skills in their own life circumstances, and community group discussion creates a healthy exchange of ideas and support. A facilitation kit allows for in-person or virtual training, and when desired, perhaps in a healthcare setting, an assessment tool enables a care provider to easily engage their client in a conversation and assess them according to the skills. Now we'd like to quickly substantiate docu-training as a behavior change methodology, since it has been robustly proven in other contexts. Docu-training is rooted fundamentally in social learning theory, which says that we change our behavior by emulating the positive attitudes and choices of others who are similar to us. Social learning says that others' attitudes, their feelings, and behaviors can be contagious in a positive way, especially when they function as solutions to life's challenges. And that's why we've chosen to improve personal determinants of health by showing and giving the feel of what healthy aging and caregiving looks like through the people in the film, calling out the skills and attitudes they use, and then directing participants through the interactivity to use the skills in ways that matter to them. Docu-training was proven to change attitudes, knowledge, and behavior in numerous studies of an international child sexual abuse prevention program. One robust study is the randomized control trial by the CDC's National Crime Victim Center. That study showed longitudinal sustainable behavior change in geographically diverse settings in both the online version of the program and the in-person version. In fact, there was no statistical difference in the efficacy between the two delivery methods. A positive contagion effect was found in that over time, the control groups actually picked up the behavioral changes of the trial groups because they were in functional proximity, they were in community, which proves out our initial aim that social learning is contagious even to untrained community members. The second study of docu-training was a qualitative study of organization and community impact by the University of Oregon. This study proved behavior change as well, but also qualitative and identity shifts within organizations, between organizations, and in partnership and community with regard to public awareness of the organization's impact. 
These two studies, in combination, show that docu-training impacts individual behavior and organizational identity and practice. So all of this is to say that docu-training is a highly effective training methodology that inspires reliable behavior change. Vistalink aims to conduct research on both Connections programs going forward. The next three slides allow you to look under the hood a bit and discover the evidence-informed skills taught in each of the programs. On this slide, you see the skills of creating what's next. These skills are like the secret sauce to aging well. As you can see, the skills are very dimensional in that they can be implemented according to the life circumstances of the person independent of their health condition. This program brims with possibility, reshapes our view of what aging can be, and focuses older adults and family caregivers in a collaborative effort toward purpose, resilience, optimism, and social support as they navigate older age together. The skills within creating what's next are behavioral personal determinants of health. These behaviors operationalize or turn on the seven personal determinants which have been conceptualized in the 2021 Optum research entitled Defining the Personal Determinants of Health for Older Adults. The determinants in that research, when mobilized through the six behaviors of creating what's next, result in resilience, purpose in life, optimism, and social support that were the focal points of a second 2018 Optum and United Healthcare study called Purpose in Life and Positive Health Outcomes in Older Adults. That study showed in exquisite detail the healthcare savings cost associated with high and medium purpose in life as compared to low purpose in life. Creating what's next improves personal determinants of health and potentially reduces health care costs. On this slide, you see the five skills learned in changing perspectives. The program supports and restores family caregivers and helps older adults understand the nature of caregiving too. As participants apply the skills in their caregiving relationship, they experience more empowerment, more freedom, and greater peace of mind. So as you'll come to understand, older adults and family caregivers can benefit from taking both programs, especially if they take them together. When a person comes into either course, they first take a self-assessment. Here, you're seeing the self-assessment from creating what's next. These questions get the person in the spirit of the course and enable them to just consider where they are. At this time in the course, they have not yet been exposed to the specific skills, Rather, they're just answering questions about their daily life on a 1 to 5 scale. Also, it should be noted that this is the self-assessment. It's not the assessment tool, which you'll see later in this presentation. The video is a montage of real-life stories and narrated skill building. The host, pictured here, calls attention to the skills being discussed by the older adults and caregivers in the film. This helps the participant to focus on the behavioral takeaways and gives a sense of order to the stories. The full-length Creating What's Next film is about 76 minutes total, and the Changing Perspectives film is about 69 minutes total. Both programs take about two and a half to three hours to complete. The next two slides enable you to watch a short trailer for each film. The first is the two-minute trailer for the Changing Perspectives program for caregivers. The second is the trailer for the Creating What's Next program for older adults. It's not that I'm being here to help Paul. I'm here because I love Paul. She was very kind tough as nails. She still is. She's 75 years old. So I know intellectually I'm protecting her, but on an emotional level, it's like a death. He became paranoid schizophrenic. It was difficult, uh, very difficult to relinquish a lot of my personal belongings. I knew as I lie on the ground that um, I couldn't feel my arms and legs. I knew something serious that was going to change my life. It just happened.
I was frustrated. I was, I was angry. I was afraid. Charlie had to go from an independent person who lived alone most of the time to always living for two people. I think a lot of times our natural instinct is to resist change. And I think it's a better course of action to ride the change out. You just tell yourself you can do this. You can get this done. This is a part of who you are. All these people, all of this. Age doesn't bother me. As far as I'm concerned, it's just a number. It's how you feel and how you think and how you act. Most boomers feel younger than they are, think younger than they are, act younger than they are. So, you know, we don't want to be confined in our choices of what to do. I think we're going to create our own choices. In the case of lions or simangs, the gibbons that you hear, or or giraffe or ostrich, they function as a wonderful group, moving as a great group, and they find their health and their unity and their life in that group. And, and most animals are in that group. We are in that group. We as humans are in this big group that moves, we're not single. We do realize that we have not lived our lives by ourselves. We have not achieved anything by ourselves. We are very fortunate. Uh, yes, Mother is in a nursing home. It is five minutes away. And frankly, that has allowed us to balance our lives. There's a partnership there between us and them. I have done seven mistakes. And uh, I think that has made me wise. Even with Joe's dad's mobility, if, he, if his mobility is good one week, we can do more. If it's not, then we need to adjust and in general he's not going to get more independent he's going to become more dependent but they've actually created a home for me with within their home i mean i have a place to work and a place to live and i'm not just living with them i have a home within their home and that's a, a wonderful thing every time we get on the mat we take a risk Every time we get on I-26, we can and, and even worse when we're on I-26. <laughs> if you can't bend, you can't be happy. You'll just end up in one of those rooms alone with your head down looking at the floor. But I'll tell you one thing that I see in our volunteers that remain very vibrant, and I'm not talking 65, 75, 85. We've got a couple of folks that actually still lead a volunteer program for us that are in their 90s. The one trait all of them share is they just keep going. They're not making a list of what hurts or what doesn't work. Like, Come on, we've got stuff to do. Just let yourself find what you love because every, everybody loves something they do. If they'll just let themselves. Each program has a workbook that guides the participant to reflect and create change in their own life. When the course is taken in person, the workbook is provided in hard copy. When the program is taken virtually or on demand, 
a PDF of the workbook is provided. Each program also has an assessment tool for organizations that wish to coach or engage their clients in a one-to-one -one relationship. Each of the skills are operationalized into four or five questions about the client's daily life. Each skill is color-coded for clarity. On the far left-hand column are the questions that a healthcare provider or coach could ask the client in a one-to-one -one conversation. The questions are very friendly and conversational. As the client shares, the provider can rate the person's use of the skill on a very simple one-to-five scale, which is very measurable and operationalized. The provider could even ask the client to rate themselves according to the scale. The design is intended to be collaborative between the provider and client, not clinical. So for example, the provider could engage the client in, say, one skill per week, just discussing the questions of that one skill. And over time, the team, the client, and even the family could be engaged in building the well-being of the client. There are several flexible delivery formats. Organizations can purchase on-demand seats that allow individuals to access the virtual coaching format on an LMS platform, using Vistalink's platform or your platform. The in-person delivery is also extremely dynamic and supportive. Just gather your group old school and have a lively discussion that they won't want to leave. Or gather your members virtually. People can watch the videos independently and gather just for group discussion, or you can conduct the whole experience playing the videos and conducting discussion on a platform like Zoom. You can lead the program all in one session or in a two-part series. In general, when leading the program to a group, virtually or in person, we recommend a three-hour total time frame, again, all at once or in two 90-minute segments. Facilitation resources make delivery very easy for in-person and virtual groups. We provide access to the videos and a facilitation guide with step-by-step -step instructions for group conversation, so the programs are very plug-and-play. There's also a format for leading ongoing discussion groups that enable participants to support each other over time. And this course is approved for continuing education for social workers, activity professionals, and clergy. In summary, the Connections Learning Series allows you to build personal determinants of health in the older adults and caregivers you serve. They develop resilience, renew optimism, live with purpose, focus on self-care, navigate challenges together, and expand their social networks, and you reap tremendous satisfaction in witnessing the difference you've made in their lives. We thank you for your interest, and we look forward to the transformative experiences you'll provide to those you serve.